right, so we welcome into the studio Roy. Roy, welcome back. I uh, what you, you Snapchat? What are you doing this? You Facebook and live yourself? I am what you Instagramming live. You're this in- is my first time doing the Instagram live. Yeah, Roy's not on Facebook. Yeah, I'm not. On, I'm not on any social media except what? for Instagram. No kidding. All know? right, so uh, this morning I'm reading online that this is the best Star Wars since 1980. That it gives fans everything that it wants. It's not a perfect movie, but if you're a Star Wars fan, you are going to be very, very happy. Now you got a big smile on your face right now. Um, who? It's a great movie. Okay, it's a great movie. I'm conflicted though. Here we go. I'm conflicted. I don't think it's better than Empire Strikes Back. Okay, well that's what they said too. That this is the best since like Empire since. still. Empire's still up there, but then... You know what happened? Was I went home and rewatched The Force Awakens. Okay. I like Force Awakens better. Huh. I did. I, and I know what people... Like, the people who didn't like Force Awakens didn't like Force Awakens because it reminded them too much of A New Hope. Like, the whole timeline of A New Hope. Yeah, that's what Chris was saying earlier in the show. And that's why people don't like it. Because it, it's almost... Uh, the journey is the same. Yeah, Ray is. comes it's the from same a movie. desert. Yes, I like that. Why? How, I like, you, how, how are you as a filmmaker yourself not annoyed? Go, you couldn't just switch a, a little bit of a plot line here or there, and we still had to blow up the Death Star again. We have the same. We have a we have a, a that catwalk moment where you know the sword fighting, and so which, it wasn't. I didn't like it. Like so, some of those things were annoying. The fact that Star Killer Base was destroyed again, uh, it got on my nerves. Like I could have done without them blowing up the whole Star Killer Base, right? Right. Which is that new Death Star? Like for me, it doesn't seem logical for somebody to put, I don't know how many, how much millions, trillions into a planet like that, a planet killer, only to have it destroyed. With Again. like with it's like it's like if an alien spaceship came and shot like missiles on the White House and then the planet Earth exploded. That's kind of like the way I feel like that's almost impossible. Like, I don't think a star killer base could be like that fragile. Yeah, it's okay. a bit ridiculous. Uh, even if you go back to the original, I mean, you know, it's a bit ridiculous to think that you're going to blow up this massive spaceship, um, you know, because of this one tiny little flaw. Yes. Well, here's here's the thing that I loved about The Force Awakens, though. And this is like this is not spoilers to, to anything in the, the the Last Jedi, so I won't have a spoiler review just just for thank you, people. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we are going to get a facial expression review, though. J.J. Abrams is just a better filmmaker. Really? So here's like, and I love Ryan Johnson. Ryan Johnson, I've been a fan since Brick and Looper. Uh, but there's something about JJ and here's what I notice. It's the flares, isn't it? (laughs) I could do without the flares. The lens flares. (laughs) JJ introduces characters very romantically. Like, so romantic for nerds anyways. So with, with the force awakens, when you see the Millennium Falcon, right, for the first time, your heart just like it melts. When Han and Chewie come inside, return to the Falcon, yes. your heart melts. Oh, yeah. When you see Leia, you're like, wow. When you see Luke at the very end, you're like, oh, Ryan Johnson doesn't capture that. I don't think. Huh. As well as Jake. You're right, because those were very emotional moments throughout throughout that movie. I didn't have those feelings in this movie. That doesn't mean the movie was bad. The movie was like the The Last Jedi was great. But for other reasons, not for those sentimental reasons. But Ryan Johnson also did uh, Rogue One, right? Is that No, what? no, no. That was Garrett Edwards. Oh, okay, got it. Which this is not a it's a non-spoiler spoiler, but he is in this as a cameo. Oh, interesting. And also the, the British Royals are in this. Uh, oh, Harry right. and um, How'd that William. play? Larry Moe and Curly. There were, there were stormtroopers, so okay. you don't know which ones, but you can tell by the, by the height 
of the stormtroopers and the fact that there's two of them in that scene. Okay. So you can only guess. You don't know for sure. Okay. Obviously. Yeah, they'll probably reveal it in like a week or so. Yeah. Now, Princess Leia, Carrie Fisher, um, we come to find out, was able to get, they had her all of her parts shot, um, right? Before before this, or most all their parts shot? Yes. Okay. By the way, everybody on Instagram, I am on the wake.show with Johnny Torres and Chris Fisher during my weekly review. Oh, so you do this on your uh, your Instagram every No, week? it's my first time oh, doing okay. Instagram Live. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, but I thought I might as well because people okay. ask me about, you know, about movie reviews anyway. And I do it here every Friday. Are you going to are you going to make the uh, three-faced review part of uh, what you do there? Yeah, you got to have ha- a gimmick. You got to have a gimmick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um obviously I I I had I had I had that here when the opening crawl came out, you know. It was like it was it was red, so I was like, <sighs> "Oh, the scroll's red." Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Oh. When I read, oh, it, when you were reading, the when scroll. I read oh. the scroll. So the very beginning of the movie, when that I was like, "Spoiler!" I, eyes are kind of red. <laughs> I felt that um, the very end, the very end was almost like. See, the thing with Ryan Johnson was, he almost does it for me. Like JJ, but JJ Doesn't got my it. emotions. Yeah. So, the very end, I didn't feel as excited about the f- the Force Awakens leaving the Force Awakens as I did leaving the Last Jedi or Rogue One. Okay. Regardless of what you think about Rogue One, Rogue One had one of the best Darth Vader scenes. Okay. Have you seen? I it? haven't seen it. No. Okay. One of the best endings in cinema history. Rogue One. Okay. Um, is that on Netflix yet? Yes, it is. Oh, really? Yeah. All right, yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Both, oh. th- both of them are just Rogue One, right? Yeah, just Rogue One, I think. Just Rogue One. Yeah. We'll have to talk about that because Disney... Well, we were definitely talking about that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Disney bought Fox, so there's... It's on the stuff you should know, so There's it's the streaming up. things. Yeah, yeah. Um, but... Yeah. What else? Do you guys okay, have well, any questions? Yeah, yeah. I got a couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how did uh, the... Uh, the fact that Carrie Fisher is no longer with us, that play, how, how long before your brain got over that part and you get, she, you were, you were into princess Leia. Uh, I didn't really think about that. Okay. I was thinking more like, how are they going to end her character? Because I already knew they can't continue with that character. Right. So my mind was constantly going, you know, how are they going to wrap this up? Wrap that up. All right. Right. You're, were you happy with it? No. Okay. You no. Just, just leave it at that, though. Leave it at that. I don't think we need to talk anymore about... No. I'm not. <laughs> you were not happy with the way that went down, but I, there, I don't think we can... Okay. There's, like... I think in this movie, there's two stupid scenes. Uh-oh. If you watch it, you'll probably agree. Yeah. I actually talked to a friend of mine last night when I got home where he's like, I didn't mind it at all. I thought it was really stupid, but it was overshadowed by... A number of really great scenes, really great scenes, to where I can just brush that stupid. Can stupid I ask you? Scene. Can I ask? And feel free to say no. Uh, can I ask how much Luke Skywalker FaceTime we get? Oh, he's practically Tunt, in every all of it. Two acts. Oh, all right. Yeah, two acts worth. I saw him on uh, Colbert the other night. What a this great is, interview. This is, I think, uh, the character Luke. His best performance in the in in the sagas. Oh wow! Well, in all due respect to Mark Hamill, and I, listen, I don't yeah. know anything about anything. All I know is that I didn't think he was the best actor in the world. No, um, you know, I I thought it was actually not even a very good one there, especially in uh, New Hope, the very beginning there. Yeah, I think he got better by the time Return to you know uh, Return of the Jedi you know came around. But uh, yeah, I was sitting here watching you know, watch him talk about all the acting he's done since and uh, all the stage stuff that he's done. Very charismatic there. And, uh, and then I didn't even realize that he was the voice of, or he is the voice of Joker yeah, yeah, in the yeah, animated yeah. series. And he's been the, the voice of Joker for like 20, 25 years. Yeah, yeah, I grew up on him. But he, he told a great story though about the, the first Star Wars and how they were all out you know the movie was uh, coming out and so they're all all out on tour they're going from town to town they're in toronto da 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 and it opens while they're out on tour and by the time they get to chicago it had blown up but they didn't know and so they're coming into chicago i guess o'hare 
And he said, there was a mom scene there. And he goes, I turned to Carrie and go, there must be somebody famous here. There must be somebody famous showing up. And so they get off the plane and see all these people dressed up like them. Oh, nice. And he goes, all of a sudden it dawns me, holy crap, they're here to see us. Uh, But they had no idea that this thing, within a week, had become the phenomenon that it had become. Yeah. And if you want to know more about that story, uh, George Lucas's most current biography is a really good read. Okay. And tells that and tells like the story of like uh, just basically his struggles with creating Star Wars uh, versus, you know, the studio system having their say in it because obviously they were bankrolling it. Uh, but all the things he had to fight for to keep it his vision is really good. Uh, another thing Mark Hamill said, he goes, you know, when we first read for this, you don't see the whole script. You get your one scene that you're reading for. And he goes, and he goes, I, his, uh, they had asked him about uh, this being sci-fi or something about being sci-fi. And he goes, you know, I didn't see it like that when we first read. He goes, to me, in my mind, this played like The Wizard of Oz. Yeah. He goes, this, that's, that's what I saw when I first read this thing was more something that was more in line with Wizard of Oz than you know, uh, some, some outer space sci-fi movie. Yeah. And so here's, here's something that, uh, Mark Hamill said about the force awakens. He said initially he, he disagreed with the way Luke was going. Right. So he disagreed with, with, with the story arc of Luke in this movie. But he ha- like and and so Mark not not to cut down the movie or the filmmakers or or like the the film in general pretty much uh, said, but he's always been wrong <laughs> before because he's not a storyteller. Uh, but you can tell why you can tell why he would uh, disagree okay. with the story because it's not a it's not your normal Star Wars movie. And that's why I kind of like it. I like it because it doesn't... Are you talking about Force now or are you talking about uh, Jedi? I'm talking about The Last Jedi. All right, Last Jedi. So The Last Jedi doesn't... uh, It doesn't... To me, it didn't feel like the normal uh, Star Wars episode. Okay. Right? Which is a good thing. Yeah, like Rogue One to me seemed a little different, you know, in a good way. But I felt that Rogue One was... Although it looked great, it looked phenomenal. Uh, it was a great movie to watch. It did have a very different feel to it. Yeah, and so, man, I went I went home to watch The Force Awakens again right after. And to me, The Force Awakens felt more Star Warsy. Uh, and here and here's why: because in The Force Awakens, um, one. Larry Lawrence Kasdan, Larry Kasdan, the original writers of the original writer of uh, Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, also co-wrote with J.J. Abrams on The Force Awakens. Now, Larry Kasdan, aside from George Lucas, is pretty much the only other authority in like the Star Wars universe that knows the characters. Okay, the way I guess the way George does, but like. Nerds these days know more like <laughs> nerds these days about Star Wars than George Lucas. <laughs> That's true. Like I literally was at Star Wars convention overhearing arguments about alien language. Like in depth, right. In yeah. depth like in your alien language that doesn't debate, exist. Debates. And I'm like, you guys are killing me right now. <laughs> All right, well, uh, enough about Star Wars, and let's talk about the uh, the big news of the day, uh, which is uh, Disney buying Fox. 